What I like to talk today to you is first I would like to outline a bit what exactly is the Swiss model. Then in the second part, what have been recent developments? You might have heard about our initiative against mass immigration that passed a couple uh, of months ago in February 2014. And then towards the end, well, what are from my point of view options for the UK to follow? What are good options and what are not so good options? First, we heard it a number of times already. Where exactly uh, is Switzerland today? Switzerland is a member of the EFTA, of the European Free Trade Association. As was mentioned by my pre-speakers, Britain was one of, the, uh, one of the countries that was a very strong promoter of EFTA before it joined 19, at the end of 1972, beginning of 1973, the European Economic Community. Um, today, EFTA only um, consists of Norway, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Iceland. However, as was mentioned as well before, EFTA is quite successful in concluding um, free trade agreements. And wherever EFTA does not find common grounds, the members of EFTA are free to have individually uh, signed free trade agreements. For example, we could not find a common ground to sign a free trade agreement uh, with China. So Iceland went ahead and signed a free trade agreement. Switzerland followed and also signed a free trade agreement with China vast, while the European Union still does not have a free trade agreement with uh, China. What happened after is after uh, in the end of 1972, the UK joined the European Economic Committee, uh, Community. We also signed a free trade agreement with the European Union, the one that is still in place. Later on, we signed a few bilateral agreements. Nevertheless, it seemed that the Swiss government was persuaded that we should start a more comprehensive approach and have a more comprehensive agreement. And this led to the negotiations of the uh, European Economic Area Agreement. That agreement was open to a number of countries that were not yet members of the European Union. In Switzerland, we had a very strong debate. My party was very small at the time. We were the only party um, against Switzerland charting the European Economic Area. And the Swiss people rejected membership of Switzerland in the European Economic Area with a very narrow margin of 50.3% on the 6th of December 1992. So this was uh, essentially a, a big crossroad in, in Swiss history or in the Swiss relationship with the European Union. Uh, we said no to the European Economic Area. I'm still persuaded today that it would have been a very bad arrangement, as was also mentioned by a few of the other speakers. Essentially, you have to take over all the European Union regulation in the respective sectors without really having a say at the table. Of course, you're being consulted, but you cannot vote yourself. After this rejection, um, the Swiss administration, which is, in my opinion at least, the more pro-European than the Swiss population, um, at the moment also our seven-member executive, uh, decided to say to change tactics. So the Swiss administration, the Swiss executive said, well, if we cannot have such a comprehensive agreement, we will try to start theme by theme, topic by topic, issue by to issue, and have bilateral agreements in a number of areas. This led to a first package <clears throat> of bilateral agreements being finished, negotiations being finished in 1999 of the bilateral one package of the following seven agreements. The most important one and the one that the European Union the most insisted on was the free movement of persons, the free movement of labor, uh, which for the European Union is a core principle. It demanded that this principle were to be included in the first round of negotiations. A second agreement was a reduction of technical obstacles. A third one, the extension of the public procurement a process to also include the cantonal and the municipal level, so to go beyond WTO regulation, a small liberalization in uh, agriculture uh, for cheese and milk products, um, an agreement on research, a civil, civil aviation agreement, and uh, an overland transport agreement, which is important for Switzerland because we have a lot of trucks that cross our country from north to south and from south to north um, in that agreement. Essentially, Switzerland agreed to cap the cost um, for a truck to cross Switzerland to 300-something Swiss francs. And in return, Switzerland agreed to increase the weight limit from 28 pound, uh, tons to 40 tons so that the bigger trucks from the European Union could cross Switzerland. So this was the first agreement. The second 
bilateral agreement was the negotiations were finished in 2004. And again, we have a main anchoring agreement, I would say, in this package of bilateral agreements. It was the Schengen Agreement, uh, which the UK does not have. Uh, the UK is not a member of Schengen. So we became a member of Schengen with these 2004 bilateral two <coughs> negotiations and now long, no longer have any controls on our borders. Further, we decided to join the Dublin Agreement, which means that an asylum seeker can only apply once for, a, um, for asylum in one European country. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well, at least uh, in Switzerland. Then we agreed to negotiate a taxation and savings agreement, which means that Switzerland collects taxes for the European Union uh, member states. So whenever, for example, a British citizen has a bank account in Switzerland, we collect 35% of, um, of tax on his uh, capital gains, and we then send 75% of what we collect to the European Union member states. The third one was a fight against fraud agreement. A fourth one was um, on processed agricultural products. A fifth one was the media agreement, which uh, um, essentially is about subsidizing film. A uh, sixth one is on environmental regulation. We joined European Environment Agency. A seventh one is on statistics to have the same um, basis of how we collect data as the European Union. And an eighth one, it was about that we do not tax pensioned European Union bureaucrats who live in Switzerland, so they're not taxed twice. So this is our, our framework that we today will have with the European Union. We uh, later on signed a few other ones uh, on Europol, Eurojust, with the European Defense Agency, um, on cooperation in, with, between the co um, competition authorities, and on Galileo, Egnos, and the European Asylum Support Office, EASO. So this is the current state that we currently have with the European Union. Whenever we have a problem, um, when the European Union and Switzerland are not happy how we interpret a certain agreement, this discussion is being led in a mixed committee. In this committee, there's the same number of Swiss representatives as European Union representatives. We try to find a solution, but there is no court that can force either party to accept uh, one way or the other. So if we do not find a solution in, in this committee, we just leave again the table and we continue as we have continued before. What are the big topics? Uh, we're currently negotiating a number of other areas, electricity, emissions trading, food and product safety on creative Europe. Uh, there's a few open issues like reach, peace building, police cooperation, and Eurodoc, the fingerprint um, database that the European Union has. But the two main issues that we have today is the institutional issue and the implementation of this initiative against mass immigration. The most important one and the most critical one is certainly this question whether Switzerland should sign an uh, a institutional framework agreement with the European Union. So the European Union tells us today that it is no longer willing to sign any more bilateral agreements of those we have by now around 20 larger bilateral agreements unless we sign an institutional framework agreement with the European Union. What exactly should be the content of such an agreement? It would have four main elements. Number one, the European Union demands Switzerland to have something like a harmonization of legislation clause, which means, similarly to Norway, Switzerland would be forced to adapt its laws within a certain period of time, for example, six months, whenever the European Union regulation changes. So, from the time that European Union regulation changes, Switzerland would be having six months to adapt its own laws to comply again with European Union uh, law. The situation today is that we have static agreements, which means that when we signed the first agreements in 1999, they were, of course, in line with European Union regulation. In the meantime, European Union regulation has evolved, whereas our bilateral agreements only reflect the state of the European Union regulation at the time when we signed the agreement. So the European Union would like to um, change that and, and have Switzerland to automatically follow wherever the European Union moves. Number two, the European Union wants us to have a supervision body, so an, some kind of a body that will check whether we comply uh, in all instances with European Union law. Uh, third, um, content would be an interpretation body, someone who independently, 
we think it will not be independent, but someone who will independently form an opinion how um, a certain bilateral agreement should be interpreted. And fourth, a dispute settlement body. So this could be, for example, in the view of the European Union, the independent European Court of Justice that would then uh, settle disputes if in such a mixed committee we would not find a common solution. Of course, uh, from my point of view, I think the European Court of Justice would by far not be an independent body to settle such disputes. So from my party's view and also I think from the majority of the Swiss people's view, um, we are very unhappy with this development. We are very unhappy um, if we have to vote on such an agreement. Our government, unfortunately, is in its majority pro-European, I would say. So they decided to start negotiations. They did not have, they do not need a parliamentary vote on that. They can start negotiations on their own. So they're currently negotiating with the European Union. And then whatever they will present to us, probably after the election in October, so probably next year in 2016, there we will be dis discussing this in parliament, parliament and probably there will be a public vote on it. We think it will lead to a loss of sovereignty. It will lead to a loss of our very strong direct democracy and it will lead also to a loss of our foreign policy uh, flexibility that we currently have. We are very flexible, very mobile. I think the European Union is much too big, much too bureaucratic, much too slow to quickly adapt in our very, changing, uh, very quickly changing world. The second big issue, where am I? A few more minutes. All right. The second um, big issue that we currently vote on is the implementation of this mass, this in, uh, initiative against mass immigration. So we have to understand Switzerland has a very high immigration today. 80,000 people net immigrate to Switzerland per year. That's 1% of our population of 8 million. So every year, 1% immigrates to Switzerland. Um, we see rising social costs. We also see that the uh, uh, qualification of the workers that come in from the European Union is different than the qualification of the ones that come in from third states, from the US, from Australia, because the ones from the US and Australia are highly restricted, so we only get the best qualified people from those countries, whereas with the free exchange of workers uh, with the European Union, anyone can really come, and even if he loses, uh, his work after a couple of months, he can still stay in Switzerland uh, for a certain time. And of course, there's also a density argument, mainly from uh, the Green uh, Party or members of the Green Party that think uh, Switzerland is becoming too crowded. So that's a bit of a few of those concerns. This initiative will not, is not compliant with our agreement that we currently have with uh, the European Union. So there's a three-year deadline by then the Swiss Government should have negotiated and presented to Parliament and implemented on a legal level um, a regulation to restrict immigration. The European Union is against even starting negotiations. So how this conflict will end is today um, everything but clear. Um, the current state, or especially this new institutional framework agreement, has many drawbacks for Switzerland. We would have to automatically adapt our laws according to European Union regu regulations, we think it will lead to a de facto uh, membership in the European Union if we would join. We also think that the bilateral agreements by now have lost quite a lot of their importance. 20 years ago, it was even more important to have bilateral agreements. As we have heard by now, um, the WTO has moved forward. There's more and more free trade agreements uh, on a higher level, also to include services. So the uh, value of those bilateral agreements that we have with the European Union has declined. What, yes, what are the options um, for the UK outside European Union? Um, EA membership is not a good option. I talked about that. I think the UK should follow some kind of a model that I would call EFTA plus or EA light, which means a free trade agreement based on goods and services, but without the free movement of persons, without a Schengen agreement, and without the euro, and if such an agreement could be negotiated with the European Union, I think even other countries that are not members of the European Union uh, today might be interested to join such an agreement. Thank you very much.